this program, and I'm very proud of the, the individuals, and we'll recognize them in a minute. But this significant step is important for us here at DACC to be able to continue to do our part in meeting the needs of a critical nursing shortage that we believe is here in Doniana County. Uh, our goal is to make sure that we are responsive to the needs of this community and by receiving accreditation this program can continue to remain responsive to the needs of the nursing and the health professions here. Um, additionally, what this means is that our graduates from the May 2015 class have graduated from an accredited program and that our future, our future graduates will also graduate from an accredited program. That is extremely important because ultimately it is all about our students and making sure they're well prepared for um, their careers ahead. At this time I want to take a moment to thank Tracy Lopez, our Director of Nursing, the faculty who are here, the staff of the, that have supported the program, Doug Scribner, our new Dean of Health Sciences has come in and been very supportive, uh, Vice President of Academics, uh, Monica Torres, for all the work that they have done. Uh, they, this faculty has worked tirelessly to retool this program. It is a whole new program, and we are very proud of that program and the work that they're doing. Their program meets the standards of the New Mexico Board of uh, Nursing, and most importantly, it meets the Accrediting Commission for Education and Nursing Standards. And with that, I'd like to invite um, Chancellor of the New Mexico State University System, Dr. Gary Carruthers, to make a few remarks. Thank you very much, Renee. This is a banner day for New Mexico State University, Doniana. Uh, it's a wonderful thing that we've closed the book on this chapter. We're back in business. It's going to be such a great benefit to our students. And I want just to thank those people in leadership roles and, and, and support roles who have made this possible. Uh, Dr. Scott came in with a challenge to put this program back together. It's not the first time that she's done that, I understand. And so her leadership, her great leadership, was important in doing this. Tracy Lopez, where are you? Tracy? Tracy's back there. Con congratulations to you. I know you've been, gone through this for a long time. And then I saw Monica Torres, the academic officer over here, has had a lot to do, to do with this. But most of all, I want the staff people involved to stand and let us all recognize those of you who worked on this so hard, because without you, faculty we couldn't staff. have done this. Thing. Go ahead and stand up. Go ahead and stand Hi, up. Faculty. So these are the folks who help us put it together. These are the folks that will make it happen and it's going to be such a large benefit to our students. Now, we're blessed at New Mexico State University to have a number of nursing programs, but one of the great demand programs is the ADN program. We have one at Carlsbad as well, and uh, I've talked to the business community, and the business community is very excited, particularly the healthcare community, is very excited about having uh, graduates of an accredited ADN program available to them in our communities. So that's going to be important to our students. Yesterday I was talking to a person in Albuquerque about health care, and I believe, I'm an economist, so numbers are not important to me, but I think he said that he could fill two to 300 nursing positions today if he had nursing, nursing graduates to do it. So that shows you the kind of demand that a person whose responsibility is to recruit health care professionals to our state, that shows you the kind of demand he's seeing for our graduates of NMSU Doniana. So, Dr. Scott, wonderful job. We're proud of NMSU Doniana and Thank proud you. of the work that you and your team have accomplished. I want to recognize, by the way, we have two regents here who think this is just as important as I do. Doreen Hutchinson and Amanda Askin are back here. And then the provost just walked in, and the provost has been involved as well in this process. So thank you all for your support. Thank you, Regents, for your support of this program. And I also want to recognize that it, I have a member of the DACC Advisory Board here. Paul Doolin has come in. He's been an avid supporter of this program. He's been deeply committed to DACC, and his advice has been invaluable to me in this last year, so I want to thank them. With that, I would like to invite Tracy Lopez to come up and uh, make a couple comments, and, and uh, I know she's been looking forward to this day. I'll set, set her right <laughs> oh, here. Thank you very much. How are you, Tracy? I'm great. Congratulations. You're feeling sure. better, huh? Yes, okay, sir. Good. Thank you. Thank you all for being here today. Um, this is a momentous occasion for our nursing program and something that we have worked really hard on for, for several years now. Um, I want to thank my faculty and staff and the students for all their hard work and effort. Without them, this day would not be possible. It's truly their work and their commitment to be here um, that allowed this, this um, occasion to occur. So thank you to them and to all the um, administrative team at both DACC and NMSU for the phenomenal support. Once again, without their support, we would not be here today.
Very good. And I'm very proud of you, Tracy. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate your leadership. At this time, uh, I'll be happy to field some questions if there are any from the media or others. Uh, excuse me, how will this play into the, uh, the osteopathic school being, being built out here? Is, is this, is this, how does this figure into that place, or does it? Uh, you know, I think one of the most important things about the New Mexico, New Mexico State University system is its responsiveness to the needs to community. The osteopathic school is a huge response to the need for doctors. We're going to train the nurses that help support the doctors in the work that are there. And I think by rounding out the healthcare team, by bringing in this particular school, I think there's wonderful opportunities to collaborate between our various health programs and the training of doctors who, in a sense, provide collaborative um, care and so we can work together on scenarios I think we can do a number of wonderful things that can look at um, bringing each of the parts together so and, and oftentimes somewhere along the line there are nurses from time to time who want to be doctors this will provide them that avenue if they wish to go into that in into becoming a doctor from the nursing profession so thank you for that You know, it, it, it's certainly an unfortunate thing, but one of, the, one of the things that my leadership team, primarily around with Dr. Torres as the academic vice president and myself, have put in place um, is we schedule a regular set of meetings with all of our accredited programs. We review the status of, of how they are doing on the various standards and accreditation. So in a sense, we put in a monitoring program. The monitoring is not punitive. I think what's been important about the monitoring of the programs is that as an administrative team, we are there to support the needs of the program. Sometimes they know what standards need to be um, addressed. They don't always have the ability to move heaven and earth to address them. But by meeting regular with us and the administrative team, it provides them an avenue to, to alert us right away to the struggles that they're having so that we can address their needs for them. What are some of the major steps that have been taken to um, ensure that there is going to be a um, um, the right number of professor student ratio in the program? Oh, that's a great question. I think you know one of the challenges when you have critical shortages, in this case the nursing profession, is the challenge of, of attracting nurse educators away from being on the floor of the hospital or, or the clinic that they're in. And so thanks to the funding in, in New Mexico, the RPSP funds through the Legislative Finance Committee, we've been able to apply for additional funds so that we can increase the salaries of our, of our nurse professionals and our nurse administrators so that we become competitive with the very field that we're training for. So this entices them to continue to stay with us. So remaining competitive with our salaries becomes important. We also think we're a really good place to work. We're a caring community as NMSU in the system is. DACC is no different than that. And I think between a, a wonderful work environment, competitive salaries, and uh, I think we, we will remain competitive. And hopefully with that means then we can attract other nurse educators and grow the program as needed to meet the needs when the time is right to make that growth. Thank you. Mr. Doolin. Yeah, um, how many um, graduates in the spring of 2015 program will now be graduating from an accredited institution? Actually, all, but I'll give you, do you have the number of exactly how many graduated in May? We had 11 graduates in May, Sorry. and all 11 are considered graduates of a nationally accredited program. So. Um, the fact that they were here when we got it, um, they are included, and, and we're glad for that. Right. How many students do you have in the program over there? Presently, is it 42? 42. We have 42 students presently in the program. Uh, keep in mind, this is an entirely different program uh, than the program that was in place in 2011, 2012. And so as a result, we have the, we've built the program to make sure that the curriculum was in place, the support for the students were in place, the faculty were well acquainted. And uh, now we'll take some time to celebrate this event, but not too long. And we'll sit down and try to decide, uh, working with your um, advisory council from the community of healthcare professionals, when the right time is to grow the program and how big that program should go to help meet their needs. And then based on that, um, identify with our business and finance folks how to support that program in terms of salaries and faculty lines and equipment. And kind of back to the question I asked before about what steps you were taking, you said just a lot of meetings with people. Could you kind of elaborate on what you meant by that? 
Sure, it's a little bit more than meeting. So, for example, the School of Health Science has put together a committee on accreditation. So, all the programs in the School of Health Sciences, as it's imagined, with a couple exceptions in, in um, public service, have specialty accreditations. So they meet on a regular basis to find out where they have commonalities so that we can improve efficiencies in getting these programs the information they need in order to write their self-studies or their reports to their accrediting body. Um, second with that, um, we, have, we have taken a position and we've retooled it as a vice president of, uh, actually, actually an associate vice president for assessment and accreditation, reporting to Dr. Torres in the academic side, who works with programs on a regular basis to ensure that student outcome assessment is in place. A lot of times knowing how good a program is is directly related to how well students are performing on the outcomes for the program. And so they have a position there available that monitors and works with them in, on assessment and accreditation manners whatsoever. System-wide, there's, a, at least specific to nursing, all of the nursing programs in the system meet on a regular basis. So whether it be the ADN program with us um, or other branch community colleges, uh, the BSN program at New Mexico State Main Campus meet together on a regular basis to share best practices and to work towards addressing. So I think one of the things that, that I'm proud of in, the, in our response to this situation is that we now work together more, we collaborate together, we share resources, and we share best practices. Were those situations just weren't taking place in the past and now you're making sure they they are happening now. It's hard for me to know for sure, um, not being here at the time, whether things were taking place, but I can assure you based on the conversations I've had, this was something that these programs requested. So I can, I can assure the collaborations are in place now. Anyone else? With that said, one more big congratulations to Tracy and her team. I am proud of these folks. And it's a great day for us.